Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and I like to talk about books, reading blogs, book reviews, mostly reading related content. So if any of that interests you, then please subscribe. But today I'm going to be doing just a regular old book review on the book Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Beanie. So before I get into the book, I just want to say sorry I haven't uploaded in a little while. I had a baby, so I've been a little bit busy for the last few weeks, but finally finished a book post, post baby and finally am getting around to wanting to talk about it. So yes, this is delayed. Please be patient with me. I think I'm going to be getting back to more book reviews and such soon. Yeah, starting to feel a little bit less like a zombie. Can still looking a little bit like a zombie. So apologies if this review is like all over the place because my brain is all over the place. I'm going to start with a summary of the book and then I'm going to get into my thoughts, the review, kind of just what I thought of the book overall. I will be leaving the summary spoiler free until the very end and then I will add in some spoilers but I will give a warning during that time. And I will also leave some timestamps down below. So without further ado, further explanation, let's get into the summary. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. So this is like a thriller kind of mystery book and and it follows a married London couple who are on a weekend away at a remote Scottish property. It's like an Airbnb kind of thing. Adam is a writer who largely adapts like horror thriller type screenplays, books for the screen. And Amelia works at a dog rescue. And it's an important thing to mention that Adam has a disorder. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's a disorder that basically makes it so that he can't distinguish people's facial features very well. So everyone's faces in a lot of ways look like the same to him. So that's just definitely something worth noting. I thought that was an interesting element to include in this as well. I forgot that I was gonna look up more about this disorder. So I think I'm gonna do that later. Anyway, that's just kind of an interesting component of the story. So the couple seems to be during this time in a period where they are kind of trying to reconnect after some difficulties and this opportunity, they like win this weekend away. So this opportunity sort of presents itself as a way for that to happen, for them to reconnect, to kind of just realign with each other. It seems like both of them are kind of thinking this relationship might be over. So the story follows their stay at this isolated converted church property, which sounds like a super cool Airbnb, just to be honest. And the strange and eerie occurrences that kind of start happening to them while they're at this property. So it builds and builds. And one of the first things is that they get there and they're essentially like snowed in pretty quickly. And it seems like their car can't go. So while this book does detail the present situation where they're at this property, all of that, it also inter cuts like past anniversaries between the couple and the state of their relationship at these varying time periods, these different anniversaries. So I think they've been married for like 10 years. Yeah, they've been married for like 10 years, I think. And it basically goes through all of their past anniversaries and the different the different states their marriage was in at these different periods in time, including managing like infertility, deceit, infidelity, just like all these just things that people go through when they've been in a long, long, long term relationship. Anyway, it kind of goes back and forth between like these past anniversaries and the present at this property. And the first of the creepy circumstances kind of starts when they are essentially, like I said, they were snowed in at this creepy property. And then it escalates to seeing people watching them through the window. And there's just a bunch of weird things like, oh, I thought that door was locked and it wasn't. And then their dog goes missing and then they eventually find the gravesite of the author Henry Winter who Adam works with. He's one of the writers or the main writer who's Adam adapts his novels into screenplays. So a it's just a series of really, really strange circumstances, strange occurrences. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some spoilers. So if you want to not hear spoilers, then I would avoid this section and skip to the timestamp below for just my review. But anyway, the whole thing is super wild. It builds and builds. Doors are mysteriously locked and unlocked and they actually find out that Adam's ex-wife Robin is behind the 
antics and that his first wife is actually the one whose anniversaries are being recounted. So like when we have all of these intercuts, we're kind of led to believe that that's still with his current wife because of the way the point of view is. We're led to believe it's like the same person in a way. So it's a twist for the reader that it's actually Robin, his first wife, that those anniversaries are. And Amelia is the one that he cheated on her with. So this is all like very juicy kind of twist. So anyway, there's like another reveal basically that Robin is also actually Henry Winter's daughter and she is essentially the reason that Adam has been able to adapt all of these screenplays and yeah it's just like something that he never knew but basically that's the connection that got him that opportunity so she's here to like get him back I guess I don't really know but in the end the reader is basically led to believe that Robin and possibly Adam it's unclear how complicit he was um, may have let Amelia die, Amelia die while she was having an asthma attack so that they could be back together but of course Adam's face blindness so they have basically the same like body description and then he's got like face blindness. So we are sort of left wondering in the end if it's really Robin that is with him or if it is ultimately Amelia. Um, so I kind of like that component and that face blindness thing because it adds that element of really not being sure. Then the last section of the book is actually from the point of view. This is like the only point of view section for this character, but the last section of the book is from the point of view of a private investigator that Henry Winter hired to follow his daughter Robin after she married Adam and the PI essentially figured out that Henry was dead and it's sort of like implied that it could possibly be Robin who was killed in the end but we're not really sure or that she I don't know it's it's really it's an interesting ending I actually kind of liked the ending but um, I'll just get right into my review so for those of you who skipped over the spoiler section I'm gonna be starting my review now and kind of just say that for me this was very mixed was it entertaining? Yes. Was I mostly engaged with the story? Yes. Actually, yes. Despite how sleep deprived I've been, I managed to like stay awake, stay with it, be engaged with the story. However, honestly, there was a lot of stuff that I just thought could have been improved upon. There was definitely some dialogue and writing that felt just honestly a little bit corny, a little bit too silly. And even like at one point, Amelia says, this weekend is not going as planned. And, and I specifically wrote this quote down because the timing of it was so weird. It's super far into the story that she says this. So it's like already a bunch of things have been revealed that are downright like dangerous. So it, it just seemed really weird that she would say it at that point because it was like it didn't even read quite like humor but it also was way too light of a statement at that point in the story like she should have been like oh my gosh this is crazy like it just was it was just really odd I don't know if that was like just her character but there were a few points like that where I was like this is just a little bit of a strange piece of dialogue and that was further along so that one I thought was worth noting but there were other times before that where there were just strange pieces of dialogue. There was a little bit to be desired as far as like the dialogue writing went. I really did like however the ending and a lot of the touches of ambiguity in the ending and how the story turned out for the most part. But I will say just as like a complaint throughout the entire story that the character Adam seemed super one-dimensional. In general these characters seemed kind of one-dimensional I guess but Adam really, at least Robin had a tiny bit of depth, maybe Amelia too, Henry was kind of interesting. Adam was very just flat as a character and in general like I said the characters just fell a little bit flat in this. Definitely not a character driven story, definitely a story driven by the plot the twists, which were fine. Yeah, if you're interested in something where the characters are fleshy and realistic, this is not it. These characters were not at all fleshed out, they were not very realistic, and they felt like paper dolls, to be totally honest with you. I think one of the things that was really bothersome was just that they lacked depth, but there just really was not any development for any character. Nobody like seem to have development or learn or nothing, no, not even a speck of development happened. 
So it was definitely more plot driven and just, yeah, not exactly my favorite. But to be totally honest, the fact that it's plot driven, the story also left something to be desired as well. I feel like there was just something a little bit missing, a little bit corny about it maybe. So for me, it just fell really flat. I'm just not really sure that I would recommend it. I found it okay. It would make do for like a plane read or a train read or a quick, like that's that's just what's around and it's okay if you're kind of already into the horror thriller mystery type genre. You'll find it good enough. It'll be fine. But I would not go out and buy it. I would not recommend it. I would not go out of my way at all to consume this. If you see it in your little local free library, give it a shot. Other than that, I would say this can probably be skipped. I mean, not to sound brutal and not to sound harsh, but it just was not very good. I just would not give it more than like two or three stars. And I'm not trying to be mean. This isn't like a hate or a rant review. It just fell so flat. And I realized that lately I think I sometimes rank my book rankings too high. I'll literally be like, I didn't like it very much and then give it four stars, which doesn't make any sense. So you know what? I'm having to be more realistic, more brutal with this. I didn't like it very much. I think I'm going to give it like 2.5 stars. It just was not very good. It was entertaining enough, but like you don't need to read it. You don't need to read it at all. Um, one thing I did enjoy was the setting. I thought it seemed like kind of a cool setting, but it just was not enough to prop this story up. So those are my thoughts. This is me getting right back into a book review after a break and it's like so mean feeling. It feels like a really brutal one, but it wasn't very good. Let me know below if you have read this book, what your thoughts were, did you like it, did you not like it, and yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I will see you later. Bye.